Hi there, my name's Ed. Today we are tasting a black tea. This is another Lapsang Souchong from, uh, this time, from uh, Tong Mu. This is Little Tong Mu um, by Mayleaf, or from Mayleaf. Um, of course, comes from Tong Mu Village, which is the home of black tea in China. Um, black tea is actually a relatively um, young uh, type of tea in, in China. Um, from about the 1600s. I suppose not young in comparison to, let's say, um, yellow tea or ripe pu'er, which are um, even only a couple of decades or several decades old. Um, but in the long, long history of Chinese tea, um, black tea is relatively young um, and came about by accident because it's essentially just oxidised tea. Um, it's what happens when you leave tea um, during its processing. If you just leave it for a bit, you leave it for a few days, um, the air reacts with the, the compounds in the leaves and they go from the kind of greener um, compounds to um, darker brown and you get black tea. So this is Little Tong Mu. Wow, some nice fruit on there. Absolutely. Really, really sweet. Ugh, fantastic. Yeah, really sweet on the nose. Really fruity. And fresh fruit as well. Quite tropical, actually. Tropical in the sense that you, it's kind of, it is that lychee. Um, yeah, really, because lychee isn't the sweetest um, kind of aroma generally, but it's such a sweet, ripe lychee. And floral. Yeah, the, 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 the description uh, by Mayleaf talks about lychee and rose, and it absolutely, absolutely is lychee and rose. Really nice top notes on this black tea on these dry leaves, really nice top notes. Um, the other black tea we tried, the Souchong liquor, um, was much more uh, malty and nutty. Those kind of base notes, those bottom notes. This however seems like much more um, focused on the top notes, which I'm really enjoying. Yes, this is what I really love. Such an amazing um, fruit in there. It's got a little bit of that, um, an undercurrent, but just, just a touch of that kind of, that obviously the black tea flavor, that black tea kind of maltiness. It's almost, um, almost a little bit like, uh, um, the smell of a sweeter stout or kind of that sort of darker beer. Yeah, there's something kind of um, a little bit, yeah, kind of almost like a, like a grain or a cereal. Still lots of lychee on the uh, wet leaves. And kind of, yeah, uh, 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 it's really, it's really perfumed. I'm not sure if I could pick out a single kind of flower or um, single note, but it's it's quite sort of um, what's the word? It's 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 per, yeah, it's perf it's kind of perfume. It's um, it's aromatic. It's floral. That's really that's really interesting. Really fantastic because obviously with black tea you expect. The maltiness you expect that classic black tea kind of builder's brew kind of realm where it's a little bit of nutty creamy honey um malt but nothing nothing too intense and it's kind of all becomes one one flavor one note but it's really nice to get that that a little bit of that kind of grain maltiness um alongside a really sweet ripe fresh um fruit character as well Wow, that is that is.
it's really, really fantastic on the nose. Now the question is, will it come through in the liquor? That is the, the golden question. The golden question, much like this liquor, will it come through? We shall see. Let's just brew it a little bit stronger because we're not going to get. Um, we want to get through this tea pretty pretty quick. Um, going for 90 degree water again because with black tea, as before, you have to contend with astringency and bitterness. So you don't want to be brewing it too hard. Um, you want to be a little bit careful, but. Um, careful with moderating the kind of the flavor and the astringency because if it's if you brew it too too hard you're going to lose out on the flavor because you're just got a hit of um, bitterness and astringency oh it's so sweet it's tea is funny because you, you don't think that you can perceive sweetness in a smell and obviously there isn't any sugar in the tea but it smells so sweet Almost a little bit of, this is kind of almost my wine, um, my wine knowledge, but kind of, or my wine kind of uh, lexicon, I so to speak. It's almost like mango and passion fruit a little bit. It, it's, that's so interesting. I mean, almost can't get over it. The aroma in that tea. So we shall see there's slightly larger leaves um, with this tea as compared to the Souchong liquor. Um, and a little bit of what kind of seems like stems as well in here. Um, but it is quite a captivating uh, looking tea. Um, obviously, nice dark brown sort of, and black leaves. Yeah. Lovely and round in the mouth. And it is coming through with that that fruit. <clears throat> Those top notes. Mm. I think this tea is delivering. I think this tea is delivering on the top notes. Now while I just get through this first and second infusion, I've been interested by almost the economy and convenience of tea bags versus a high quality, um, well produced black tea. And I almost wonder if there's like a kind of happy medium somewhere there where you can have a, a nice black tea um, that's convenient and isn't too expensive. Um, that's enjoyable because obviously the market is dominated by the kind of tea bag and the kind of um, the consumer buys tea bags. That is how people consume black tea. But is there something, is there kind of a, a middle level, so to speak? Um, between this a gong fu session um, and a tea bag, the uh, the dreaded tea bag. I suppose one issue um, or one consequence of the tea bag being such a um, fine kind of almost powder. Um, those small particles is that it, it extracts very quickly so it's quick um, and from a very small amount of leaf you get a relatively strong um, infusion and it's not strong in terms of really in terms of flavor um, in terms of actual kind of like the kind of aromatics it's strong in the sense of you get that that kind of um, black tea flavor you get the astringency you kind of get that builder's brew um, profile, um, but none of the kind of interesting 
you know, fruity kind of floral notes as well. And a bit of creaminess as well on this uh, on this liquor. A nice bit of creaminess and also a little bit of, t of toasty nuttiness as well, obviously coming from that oxidation. A little bit of maybe a bit of pear for me actually, like a really baked kind of stewed pear, and maybe a bit of brown sugar. So there's, there's a, there's, there really is a lot going on um, in the aromas of this tea. And I'm getting a good amount of um, that reflected in the liquor, which is fantastic. I'm getting the fruit. I'm getting that, that sort of tantalizing sweetness. I'm getting a bit of the, the multi creamy nuttiness. Um, I'm almost tempted to brew this tea hotter. There's something just not quite in these two black teas that I've been brewing. There's almost something not quite hitting the mark in terms of the intensity of the flavor in the liquor. There's so much aroma on these leaves but there's not quite that intensity um, coming from the liquor. It definitely is there. Oh, that's, that's so good. That is so enjoyable just to, just to smell, just to really absorb that, that profile. Or maybe if they kind of compare this, um, some of the notes in this to Eastern Beauty and I absolutely see what they're saying. Eastern Beauty is such a fantastic tea and you really do actually get a bizarrely, it's almost like an Eastern Beauty that's been oxidized. It's like, cause you've got that, 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 that kind of honeyed fruit, ripe fruit, tropical fruit and elements in there. Really interesting stuff. I might just do one more infusion of this. And do you drink black tea? Do you drink a builder's brew? Can you enjoy Builders Brew? I mean, it's an interesting thing for Gong Fu tea lovers and brewers. We struggle to enjoy um, a Builders Brew because it's so far removed from what this is. Um, almost like philosophically, like you can't enjoy it because it's the lowest quality. It's, you know, it's in the, uh, the brewing and the infusion is all wrong and, you know, all this stuff. I myself have been attempting to be able to enjoy a builder's brew because really why not and the thing is it's it's what's kind of prevalent in a sense um, and you don't want to have to almost exclude yourself from what is available to you in a, in a way it's like saying um, you know I'll only eat a certain you know a certain category of foods rather than you know or a certain uh, I'll only ever drink this certain uh, tea made a certain way or coffee made a certain way or, uh, you know, whatever beverage, you know, in a certain way. It just it excludes you um, from being able to, you know, have these, you know, different beverages in different, if, in different contexts. Um, and you can be kind of very strict with yourself if you like and, you know, never have a builder's brew and never, you know, never basically have tea outside of, um, very particular circumstances or circumstances in which you brew it yourself. So that is the question. Will you compromise, essentially, is the question. <laughs> Will you compromise? And us uh, gong fu tea brewers generally are not compromising people. There's a reason that we uh, <laughs> There's a reason that we do this, <laughs> that we do this, whatever this is. Um, so there we go, I'm just going to take one last sip of this, um, one last cup of this third infusion. Getting a little bit more into the, the, the basier notes, but I really loved how 
the top notes have expressed themselves through the aroma in the dry and the wet leaves and how that has come through into the liquor. However, I think I will have to experiment with brewing it a little bit hotter because I want more intensity of flavour in this liquor. And I'm not sure if I'm that scared of a bit of astringency. So I'll have to, um, I'll have to do that little experiment and find out. Anyway, this has been um, Little Tong Moo. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.